Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with Flask on Windows. So a prerequisite for this is you need to have Python installed. I have the latest version of Python at the recording of this video, which is Python 3.7. You also need to have some kind of text editor. I have Sublime Text as the text editor. Um, just something that is designed for handling code files because of the way that Python works. The spacing between the characters and the lines actually mean something. So you want a text editor that can take that into account. So I'm using Sublime. I'll put a link to Sublime in the description below so you can download it if you don't already have a text editor. Another good one is VS Code. So the first thing I've done is I've created a directory where I'm going to have my Flask app. I have it in my documents folder and I named it Flask underscore app. So now what I want to do is I want to open up a command prompt. I just typed CMD here in the search and I'm going to change directory to my documents. So for me, I'm starting in my user folder. So if I change directory to documents, it takes me there and then CD will take me to my Flask app. And this is the directory that I created. And then CLS will clear out the screen so I have everything at the top so it's easier to read. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create something called a virtual environment. And this will allow me to keep all of the things I need to install for my Flask app contained to just this one project. Instead of being global to where they would affect all the projects that I'm working on at the same time, having a virtual environment keeps everything contained. So you would just have one virtual environment per product per project. So to install a virtual environment, you do pi dash M and then V E N V and then give it a name. So a typical name is just E N V for environment. And of course the V E N V here just is short for virtual environment. So you hit enter once you have that pi dash M V N V and then the name of the virtual environment and the name in my case is E N V and you just wait for it to install. Okay, so once this comes back, you know it's installed and you can look in your folder and there should be a new directory there called ENV and you'll see these folders in there. You don't have to worry about working with it directly from the file explorer here. Instead, you want to use the command prop. So now that I have that, I want to activate this environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the name of the directory. So ENV, which is the name of the virtual environment, backslash scripts with the capital S backslash activate with a lowercase a. So just type that and hit enter and it will turn on your virtual environment and you'll see ENV or whatever the name of your virtual environment is over here in parentheses. And now you can install Flask. So to install Flask, you use the Python package installer, which is called pip. You type pip install and then Flask and it's going to go ahead and install Flask for you. Should only take a moment. And then once it's installed, we can go ahead and actually write a simple Flask app. So I'm going to hit type CLS again to clear that out. And then I'm going to create a file in my Flask app directory, and I'm just going to name it app.py. So this is going to be my Flask app. And because this is my main app file, I'm going to set an environment variable all my command props. So set, and this variable is flask underscore app in all caps equals, and then whatever the name of the file is. So in my case, app.py. And this will allow flask to know what file to look for when it wants to run. So now to write the code, first I need to import flask. So from flask, import flask. So the first flask here is lowercase. This is the library. And then the second flask here is uppercase F and that's the class for flask. And then you want to instantiate that class and by convention it's just app equals flask. So capital F and then underscore underscore name. And this references the name of the current module that you're working in, which is app.py. And then I'm going to create something called a route, which is just basically the URL endpoint for a particular thing in my app. So this won't have one, so it's just slash, but you can put whatever you want here. It can be something like hello, uh, files, profile, whatever you want. 
but I'll just leave it a slash and then give this function under it a name. So you put a function here. The name can be whatever you want, really. Uh, so you just name it something that is descriptive. In this case, this is the index, which means the base URL for whatever your site is. So you have this decorator um, at app.route and then the slash. And then you have a function directly underneath it called index. And then I'm going to write a return statement. And then I'm going to return a h1 tag. So this is HTML the word hello, and then a closing h1 tag. So what this is doing is this is returning directly to the browser. And since this is HTML, the browser will interpret it as HTML and show it to you. So this is it for a very simple Flask app. So to run it, you type Flask run. And because you set this Flask app equal to the name of your file here, Flask run knows what to run. So when you hit enter, it's going to tell you where it is. So it says running on this. So 127.0.0.1 and then port 5000. So just copy that and put it into your browser. And then you'll see hello. Now to make this a little more interesting, let's make a small change. What I'm going to do now is allow for a name. So I'll put this bracket here and the name. So this is not HTML. This is basically like a placeholder. And any placeholder that you have here in the endpoint, you need to have in your function here as a parameter. And then what I'll do is I'll put that name inside of the HTML. So I'll put a placeholder for a string and I'll just put format and then I'll pass in the name. So that's the change, but now when I run, so I want to go back here. I'll hit control C to stop the server and then flask run again, because I made a change. I want to restart the server. There is a way to do it automatically, but I'll talk about that in a different video. But for now, just stop the server with control C and then do flask run again. And it's going to restart. And then here, if I try going to this, I get not found. And the reason is, is because that endpoint no longer exists because I have this placeholder. So now I have to pass in something and then Flask will read it for me. So I'll just pass in my name. So the same URL, 5000 and slash some name. So slash Anthony and I see hello Anthony here. So anything I put in the URL, it will appear here. So any name that you put or any word that you put in general, it will appear here. So that's it for creating a very simple Flask app on Windows. Um, if you hit Control C, the app will stop. So if I try running this again, uh, nothing will happen. Or it just gives me an error message, problem loading page because the server isn't running. And to get out of the virtual environment, I just type deactivate. And that's it. So I hope this video helped you I uh, get started with Flask on Windows. And basically, if you can do this, then you'll be able to do or follow any other tutorial on Flask because the beginning process is always going to be the same. After that, it just depends on the code that you're writing. But to actually get an app up and running is the most important part because once you can do that, then it's basically just writing whatever code that you need to write. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.